For over half a century, humanity's gaze has been fixed on the stars. Yet our physical presence remains rooted just beyond those initial small steps on the moon. We stand at the precipice of a new era, with billionaires like Elon Musk and companies like SpaceX proclaiming their goal to send humans to Mars. But the greatest hurdle isn't the rocket nor the fuel. It's the journey and the brutal reality that reaching Mars is not the end of the danger. It is merely the beginning. The one-way voyage to the Red Planet will take between six and nine months under the best circumstances. For that entire duration, astronauts will be suspended in a vacuum hostile to life, where the very biological conditions that sustain the human body cease to exist. In zero gravity, muscles rapidly weaken. Bones lose approximately 1% of their density every month a rate equivalent to what an osteoporosis patient on Earth loses over a full year. The absence of gravity also confuses the inner ear and the muscle sensors responsible for the body's balance, leading to what NASA terms space adaptation syndrome. In the initial days, astronauts battle nausea, vertigo, headaches, and debilitating fatigue. As the spine is freed from Earth's pull, astronauts can even grow several centimeters taller, but this comes at the cost of severe back pain. Though the brain eventually adapts, the relentless loss of muscle and bone continues. On Earth, gravity pulls fluids toward the lower body. Without it, blood and other bodily fluids tend to disperse evenly, resulting in facial puffiness and thinner legs. But the effects run deeper. Increased intracranial pressure, a direct result of zero-g fluid shifts, pushes on the optic nerve, potentially causing permanent vision loss. This shift also triggers a chain reaction in the cardiovascular system. The body, sensing excess fluid around the heart, increases urine production to compensate, leading to a 10 to 15% reduction in blood plasma. The heart, now working less, shrinks in size. Blood pressure becomes unstable, making simple acts like standing up a challenge upon returning home. Space interferes with the body down to its most fundamental level. In NASA's twin study, astronaut Scott Kelly, who spent a year in space, was compared to his twin brother Mark, who remained on Earth. The results were startling. Scott's genes related to DNA repair and immunity showed altered expression. Telomeres, the caps at the ends of chromosomes, lengthened, only to rapidly shorten upon his return. Space radiation and the sterile environment profoundly weaken the immune system. White blood cells behave differently, inflammation increases, and allergic responses change. In the long term, this raises the risk of cancer and autoimmune diseases. Any astronaut who travels outside of Earth's protective magnetosphere becomes a target for cosmic radiation. These high-energy particles can fragment DNA and leave permanent damage in tissues. While the ISS is largely shielded, deep space missions to Mars will not be. One of the gravest risks is solar flares. A massive flare in 1972 narrowly missed the Apollo astronauts. Had it struck, the consequences would have been lethal. Current shielding cannot offer complete protection. On the Martian surface, astronauts would need to scramble into heavily fortified bunkers within the hour of a major flare. Over the long term, Galactic cosmic rays, particles that are nearly impossible to block, will pose a significant cancer risk. Beyond the physical risks lies space's silent enemy, isolation. Living millions of miles from Earth for months on end will test the human psyche like never before. ISS astronauts feel this pressure, yet they can communicate with Earth instantly. On a Mars mission, the communication delay could reach 40 minutes round trip. This means that during a medical or technical emergency, help cannot arrive in time. No human psychology has been tested under this extreme scenario. NASA treats exercise as medicine. On the ISS, astronauts spend over two hours a day on treadmills, weights, and bikes. Yet, they still return weakened. Why? Because for the remaining 21 hours, the body is still weightless. Scientists are researching high-protein diets, electrical muscle stimulation, and drugs to slow bone loss. But the ultimate solution may come from physics, not biology. Researchers are designing rotating spacecraft to generate artificial gravity. While short-term centrifuge tests have slowed muscle and bone atrophy, 
Making this viable for a long mission presents monumental engineering challenges. If short-term missions degrade the body, what about living on Mars for years? Experts predict profound, permanent transformations. In five years, low gravity will rapidly weaken the musculoskeletal system. Despite regular exercise, the heart will atrophy from reduced effort. After 10 years, the body will partially adapt, with shifts in fat distribution and posture. But returning to Earth would cause serious health issues due to the dramatically higher gravity. The true transformation may occur over 50 years and beyond. Generations born on Mars could evolve into a new human variant, with longer limbs, weaker bones, and a physiology suited for low gravity. This evolutionary adaptation could make returning to Earth nearly impossible, solidifying chronic issues like immune system weakness and cardiovascular disease. Making humanity a multi-planetary species is the ultimate goal. But to reach it, we must pass the ultimate test. The ISS is 400 kilometers away. The moon is 384,000 kilometers away. Mars, at its closest, is 225 million kilometers distant, 580 times farther than the moon. The optimal launch window only opens every 26 months, meaning a round trip could last three years. For that duration, astronauts must endure isolation, radiation, and the erosion of their own bodies. Building the rockets is not the problem. The challenge is sending people. And this is not just an engineering problem. It is a biological, physiological, and psychological frontier that humanity has yet to fully cross. We've reached the end of another video, friends. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. We'll learn a lot from the videos I share. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my new videos. See you in the next video.